Well, it was two weeks ago and I set up this very strange time-lapse area where I was videoing a dead rodent which I'd found in my garage. You probably make no sense of this unless you've seen the other video. And we might come in and see what's gone on over the last couple of weeks. I'll just pull out that umbrella so we've got some better access. And that's about the only magnum you'd be allowed in Australia because you're not allowed to have guns here. Well, that's going to help us see a bit better. I, as far as I know, the lights have been on for two weeks. I've not been turned off. I had all the power in a box there protected. I'm glad it was protected because we had a whole bunch of rain come in in the last couple of days. The camera, as far as I know, kept recording. And uh, what's very interesting is I can see the rodent head there, but the body has gone. And that only happened in the last couple of days. So hopefully that device there is going to tell us who did the body snatching. Well, he's certainly not looking as sprightly as he was two weeks ago. And the real sick part of this mystery is who would come along and eat a decayed rodent body? Well, I can still see the camera is recording. Every 10 seconds, a little green light that you can barely see will go off on the top there. I ended up powering it by mains because I wasn't that sure how long the four batteries inside would last. But I think there's one mistake that I did and I may have set the camera up a little bit too close to the subject. I think the camera needed to be uh, back there. Um, but we will see, maybe I'll be able to sharpen up the video that is created. I'm hoping that will be the case. The camera lens does look clean. It'd be interesting to see if it's affected by moisture or the rain that hit a couple of days back. And when I look over the area where I placed the rodent body, I think the obvious changes are, well of course the rodent body is no longer there. It was laying in there. The vegetation seems to have come a lot closer to where I laid the rodent. and. Well, who knows? That little time-lapse camera will probably reveal a whole bunch of secrets that you never normally see. There's also another problem, potentially because there was direct sunlight coming in under the umbrella at certain times of the day, mainly in the morning, and mainly in the afternoon, the sun would be coming in on this side, and I've got a feeling that that camera there was really struggling with the brilliance of the sun. Its iris was literally shutting down, and that's going to affect the footage that I've captured. But hopefully that problem is only occurring in very short time frames in the whole video. Well this video is all very reliant on what images are caught in this camera. It's probably time to turn it off and see if I can recover the data that's on the card here. Yoo-hoo! This here will reveal the secrets from the last two weeks and explain where the rodent body has gone. It's a mystery. The camera I used for capturing this time-lapse sequence is a dedicated time-lapse camera from Brino. It's interesting for the fact that you can power it by AA batteries and can actually power it by a USB port on the side and I powered it over the two-week period by using one of those power sockets that has a USB outlet on them that you can see now in the shops. So I was relying on, in a sense, mains power to power the camera. I had the time-lapse capture setting set at one frame every 10 seconds. I don't know whether that was good or bad, but having it set at 10 seconds actually enabled me to see the critter which stole the body later on in the video. If I had it set any more than one frame every 10 seconds, I would not have seen this culprit. The camera generated 15 one4 gigabyte files, which was something like 21 gigabytes all up, and the video length became just over an hour. Obviously, I'm not going to sit you through an hour of video right now, but what is very interesting that this camera did pick up is there is lots and lots of things going on in the soil that you think is dead. In fact, the soil is very alive. I also think I had this camera set up a little bit too close to the subject, and I think the camera's iris was very sensitive to light fluctuations. And maybe the best way to explain it is it didn't have that very clever iris that you would see on a GoPro camera. And the funny thing is, considering how much I paid for this camera, if I spent just a little bit more, I'm not going to talk numbers, but if I spent a little bit more, I could have actually purchased a GoPro camera. And from what I can see on YouTube, people are pulling off extensive time-lapse captures via GoPro cameras. I think I'll start accelerating the time here because we've got two weeks of observation to chew through before we see the nasty critter that likes to munch on decayed rat carcasses. It's sort of sad that I've got to accelerate the time here, but I need to because we don't want to be sitting here for an hour watching this rodent decay. And the time of year I shot this was the beginning of winter in Australia. So there weren't many flies around. Let's say if I did this in summer, 
I think you'd see a very different start to the first few days of this decay. You would see a lot of flies come and visit this dead rodent. Sure, flies did come and visit the rodent, and sure, we know what flies do after they do that. And yes, later on there were maggots coming out of this dead rodent. But that's only a small part of the story. There were all sorts of critters who were coming along and having a nibble. And there were things coming from underneath, and there were things coming from the sky. It was relentless, and it was endless, and it was going on 24-7. The other interesting part to the time-lapse camera that I purchased, and I initially didn't buy it for doing this video, it was bought for another purpose, is you can power it with AA batteries, and that's four AA batteries. I have a feeling I could have pulled off this two-week capture by purely using the battery power, but I wasn't prepared to take the gamble because I still wasn't confident enough with the camera. This is really one of the first large captures that I've done with this camera. It's a camera which is very simple, but then again, so is a GoPro. There are no camera settings for the iris. Uh, the only thing you do change is the frame rate. And like a GoPro, it's got one of those locked focuses. So really anything which is within a ruler's length becomes out of focus. I have a feeling you can buy macro lenses for this camera. Overall, the camera seems to have a feel for doing something over a much longer period of time. I think just two weeks is really a short period of time for this camera to do a capture. But you really need to go and do your homework and look at videos that this camera has done versus what the GoPro cameras can do. Mind you, I'm absolutely sure that the GoPro cameras don't have a battery pack that could compete with this very low energy using camera that I used for this video. Well, we're coming into the final few days of this capture and it started to rain. It didn't rain a little bit, it rained a lot. And things started to grow and all of a sudden the rodent disappeared. And you're gonna have to ask yourself, well, who would come along for a munch and crunch on a two week old decayed rodent? Who would it be? And if you remember, I did have my camera set at one frame every 10 seconds. So let's slow this video up, let's go back a little bit, and let's see who did the body snatching. And it's funny, in a recent video I had some people telling me that these critters were cute, furry, and in no way dirty. Well, I think you guys are going to have to reassess your thoughts on being dirty. He's only there for one frame, but he's been caught out. You missed it, didn't you? It happens very quickly. Maybe if I pull up the single frame, you will see this filthy culprit. The rat comes in and eats his buddy who has been laying there for two weeks decaying. Anyone who's going to argue with me that having these critters around is not a problem at all needs to have a very serious reconsideration of their comments. Obviously, these guys will eat practically anything. Well, to finish off this time-lapse analysis video, here is the two weeks of decay pressed into around 30 seconds, or maybe a little bit more, and maybe that will give you an idea of what went on over the two weeks. I was a little bit surprised how much of the rat was still there by the time the other rat came and ate him. Maybe the cold weather is a factor there. Maybe I need to do another one of these videos in the middle of summer when I know that the K would be far more rampant. Anyway, thank you for watching as always. And sorry for this very strange video. Bye for now.